Director Ken Russell's flamboyant film, Billion Dollar Brain, the third in which Michael Caine portrays Len Dayton's character Harry Palmer, can be seen on Friday night on BBC Two at 9.30. Entertainment for Thursday on BBC Two. The Gypsy Moths. There's spectacular action as Burt Lancaster stars as the leader of a roving skydiving entertainment team. The Gypsy Moths, tomorrow at 7 o'clock. In five minutes, football in the frenetic and frenzied style of the Marx Brothers in Horse Feathers. First, the news on two with John Humphreys. The time is 10 minutes past 11. The Soviet Parliament meets, but again the President is missing, and there have been new rumours that he's seriously ill. President Andropov did not appear at today's session of the Supreme Soviet, which meets only twice a year, and his absence brought increased speculation about his future. He was last seen back in August, and he's missed three important public occasions since. American reports say he's been on a dialysis machine, and there may have been a kidney transplant which failed. 2,000 deputies to the Soviet Parliament and not a dissenting voice among them. It was business almost as usual. Only Yuri Andropov stood out for his absence among the leaders, the other old men who are taking to old age better than he is. Today was to show ceremony, not to decide policy. The budget was agreed without much discussion and the defence budget without much comment. It was left to the finance minister to announce an increase in defence spending and NATO, he told the assembly, was to blame for that. The Andropov line, if not the Andropov presence, was strongly in evidence. The widow of the police inspector killed by the Harrods bomb says the people who planted it can't be human. Mrs Maureen Dodd was once a policewoman herself and helped to train her future husband when he joined the force. Inspector Stephen Dodd died on Christmas Eve from the head injuries he suffered in the car bomb attack 11 days ago. Tonight his widow went back to Chelsea police station where she spoke of her husband's bravery. As he explained to me that 80% of the targets were on Chelsea's ground and that he didn't care um, how, how idiotic he looked. If there was a suspect bomb, he was going to cordon off to clear the civilians, to make sure nobody was hurt or as, as much as possible. And he'd do that every single time, even if he thought it could be a hoax. He would risk himself before he'd risk anybody, be it one of his men or... I mean, there was no question he was the leader, therefore it was his job to go in first. A car bomb exploded in the centre of Belfast tonight. The IRA say they were responsible. The car had been parked just outside the city's security gates, in an area which two hours earlier had been crowded with shoppers. A telephone warning allowed police to clear the area and no one was injured. Three women peace campaigners were arrested at Greenham Common Air Base last night after they broke into the main traffic control tower. They'd been charged with causing criminal damage. And 32 anti-nuclear protesters were arrested at another American air base 40 miles away at Upper Hayford in Oxfordshire. The demonstrators, who'd been camping outside the base for the last two years, tried to climb over a perimeter fence to get inside. They were promptly arrested, but some were later released without being charged. In the United States, the Reagan government has, as expected, been criticised in a Pentagon report on the terrorist bombing of the US Marine headquarters in Beirut. The local military command also shares the blame, and a major review of American policy in Lebanon has been called for. Israel is holding a major review on security in southern Lebanon in an attempt to reduce military casualties. The army is said to be considering a withdrawal to the south of Sidon. The United States intends to withdraw from the United Nations Agency, UNESCO. The American administration claims the educational, scientific and cultural organization has become too political and anti-American. It's a serious blow for UNESCO, which relies on the United States.